始めSent that video from Zach. Thornton. Zach. Barton. Thornton. Barton. 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 It's funny because he farted. Or I just use the magic of video editing to make it seem like he farted because. I like to haze my viewers. Hazed! If you know anything about training, you need at least three weeks for your body to start adapting to the stimulus. And the stimulus is training. This week, my training looks. Exactly like the last two weeks. I took that uh, USTF CCCA class this summer, and so I changed my squats. I made my feet a lot narrower. I still go just as deep, but it doesn't hurt nearly as much. And while I'm doing these squats, I'm adding an eccentric loading component uh, just to switch it up and see what happens. I'll tell you, the first two weeks were super hard, and I had to drop the weights down, and then all of a sudden everything started firing faster, and I felt great. So I think I made the right choice with the eccentric loading. The Olympic lifts have been different too. Usually I clean or snatch and then I drop the weight and then I do it again and that's uh, how I was taught how to do it. And that's how a lot of people do it. But in that class this summer they were talking about clean it, drop the weight down to your waist, barely touch the ground, come back up, clean again. Let me tell you, it's hard. And for again two weeks it was terrible and not fun. <laughs> But now it's starting to feel great again. It's just nice doing something different, and it's nice kind of being scared, not knowing if it's gonna work, and then it does work because you stuck it out. So I'm gonna keep doing that. It's fantastic. Also, I do uh, a bunch of recovery days in there, and my rec recovery days used to just consist of, you know, I would do weights on recovery days. And again, I took that class and I found out I was doing everything in the wrong order. My recovery days now are circuits, it's to get some lactate built up into my legs a little bit because it promotes recovery. I mean, I don't always feel great doing it that day, but it's the next day I feel like a million bucks. It's fun finally doing them right, and they're working the way they are supposed to be working. Yeah, that's been my week. Also, I got some more workout attire. Yep. Yep. Last week, I got my first pink shirt, and now I have my first purple shirt ever. <clears throat> KMR Athletics, based out of South Carolina, and it's run by Brian Riggs. He has a really cool story. He said his daughter got him into it, was a 13-footer in high school, and then a 14-4 person in college. From then on, you know, he started making devices, just like anybody makes it. I made a freaking pool, underwater pool contraption. Steve White has more contraptions than he knows what to do with. But we started this business to kind of sell these contraptions to people around the area, and then it just started building and building and building. He's got like... 30 to 50 junior high and high school kids each summer and winter for indoor track and it's USATF sanctioned. South Carolina doesn't have any indoor facilities and Brian's trying to make the first indoor track and field facility in South Carolina. I love these stories about people out there who are just doing everything they can to promote the, promote the sport of track and field and help kids be interested in it and give them a way to do it. So Brian, you're the man. I am going to work so hard, KMR athletics gear. I'm going to test it out for my testing this week, see if I get some testing PRs for uh, September. One of the coolest things Brian wrote me in his email is he says, there's this athlete, Sarah Springley, Sarah Springley. There's a picture of her on her Instagram. She is sleeping on a pole vault pit holding an owl. That can't get any more badass. So Team Hoot, all the way, it's all the way in South Carolina. So awesome. Made my day. Awesome. He also said that at their USATF state meet summer, two of the kids decided to opt out of the normal clap and do the hoot clap. My first thought was, there's kids out there doing the hoot clap more than me. I better step up my game and start doing the hoot clap more. If you guys are new to these vlogs, the hoot clap, instead of going, 
and everyone takes off, you go hoot, 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 hoot. So <laughs> I gotta get back on that. There's athletes in South Carolina doing it more than I am. I'm I am slacking and failing in my hooting, <laughs> my hooting duties. <laughs> I also got a YouTube question from Ryan Camp saying I talk a lot about shoulder rehab, so I'll kind of show you a little bit what I do. So if you guys don't know my story, two years ago I had extremely bad shoulder pain where if I just did this it hurt. I had a bunch of surgeons tell me I'd never pull vault again up in Fargo, and then luckily the Minnesota Twins shoulder surgeon can't get much better than that, but he works on pitchers and professional athletes. And he looked at me and pretty much said. All right, we'll fix you up, and you'll be vaulting again in like five months. It's like the greatest news I've ever heard. So anyways, he gave me a bunch of shoulder stuff. I One of the ones he said that I'll probably be doing forever. Uh, I do it every single morning when I wake up. I don't allow myself to eat before until I get it done. Part of my training is getting up every morning and doing some prehab so my shoulders don't fall off while I'm pole vaulting. It's not my favorite thing to do is wake up and start doing the exercise, but I feel it's necessary. Here's, here's one of my biggest pet peeves in the entire world, is when someone finds out you work out. How much do you bench? Like why is bench the standard for how strong you are? How much do you bench? It doesn't matter how high you jump, how fast you run. How much do you bench? If you can push up, if you can pull down, if you can pull horizontally. How much do you bench? It doesn't matter. Everyone just cares about how much you bench. How much do you bench? And I think that's stupid. It's just dumb. Don't even get me started. I'm alright. How much do you bench? I hate how everyone thinks a bench is a standard for how strong you are. But anyways, back to not ranting. Everyone does all these push movements is what happens is their shoulders start to turn in. And it's because they're always doing pushing movements and not enough pulling movements. So it's what you want is you want your shoulders to be back and down. So your shoulders are in the optimal position for movement. That's pretty much, that's as simple as you can make it. You want your body to be in the, op the optimal position for movement. And pole vault is a very forward moving dominant activity. I mean, you hit here, but then everything's here. And so everything kind of gets tight and then you're starting to turn in and that's kind of what happened to me. So every morning I do a lot of stuff where I'm pulling everything back and down, my arms are up and I'm stretching everything out to try and create that mobility so my shoulders don't hurt. Because that's the biggest factor I found in the last five years that if my shoulders hurt, I can't pole vault. There's just no way. I can't even lift up my arm, let alone hang on something and try and swing. So that's kind of my guide that if they hurt, I need to back off or do something different. And it works. Works for me. Works for what I need. This one seems to help my anterior pelvic tilt. My least favorite one. Also, I have a funny feeling that you're like, What the hell? Those are the weirdest pants ever. Well, Carrie keeps stealing all my pants. Guys can't steal girls' pants and wear them. <laughs> it doesn't work the same. And then a little bit more about motivation. I bought like three whiteboards and I hung them up in all the places I'm at all the time. I have like this office area in here and then I have my room where I sleep. I have a whiteboard of my goals, little stuff that I always want to skip. Like, I have a big box on one of those whiteboards that says, Every f day. Do the little things. This is my board that reminds me to do everything every day. I see it every day, that's why I put it there. I put my goals on there as motivation. It seems to work because it's a giant whiteboard. So I do it every f***ing day. And the little things for me are is that prehab stuff because it's not fun to do. You just sit there and you bust it out. Or drink a gallon of water a day. Make sure you get enough sleep. All that little stuff adds up like I said in that last vlog. So I give myself reminders and I see it every day. And then at the top I write my goals. I don't know if I want to share my goals with you because they're pretty lofty. Uh, but that's a good thing. It keeps me going. But at the same time... You need to see it every day so it can remind you why you're doing what you're doing. Next week I'll be testing. And mountain biking. I love rest week because I get to do something a little bit different and kind of let my mind settle back to normal. And I'm excited to test to see where I'm at. Jack for it.
So like always, please follow me on YouTube. Or you are following me on YouTube. Please subscribe to me on YouTube. Because that helps me out. Like my video. Sometimes, I mean, that helps me out too. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Because Danger's my middle name. That's creepy. If you want me to write you some workouts, the info's in the description below. If you want to send me some clothes. Club, business, just a guy with a cool shirt who wants to send me a shirt to work out in. Do it, because... This is awesome, and I am looking forward to wearing the hell out of this. And the fighting artichokes. So badass. Please continue to help support me and share these. Just give them to people. Tell them they're kind of fun and funny, if you think so, or helpful, and that would be great. See you next time. This is what it is, okay? I said empty your mind. Be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend.